So the idea here is if we can understand the process of how our minds work, we can then start to work with our minds. Uh, and this is where, you know, this is where mindfulness comes in. So I probably don't need to introduce this uh, definition that John kabat puts forward onto this group, but you know, John has been one of the foremost researchers and developers of Western-based, you know, uh, clinically-based mindfulness programs, obviously starting with mindfulness-based stress reduction. And there are many derivatives coming from that mindfulness-based cognitive therapy, mindfulness-based relapse prevention, and things like that. Now, if we take this, uh, this definition, the way I like to think of mindfulness, you know, this paying attention is you know from a mechanistic perspective it's about helping us see when we are acting automatically and john often talks about autopilot where we are reacting based on our conditioning you know, the buddha talked about conditioning quite a bit we are conditioned the mind is conditioned and instead of habitually reacting we drive this wedge of awareness in so that we can respond with awareness okay uh, I'll give you a clinical example of a patient that I worked with who was struggling with smoking. He wasn't aware. So he came to me after smoking, I think for about 40 years and he wasn't aware of how his mind worked. He wasn't aware of this process. And we calculate, we, first thing we did was I showed him this, this habit loop, you know, the trigger, the behavior and the result. And we calculated the number of times he had reinforced this process. You ready for this? 293,000 times that he had reinforced this process. And he had no idea how his mind worked. Just that simple reinforcement learning process. And, you know, he tried everything he could to quit smoking. You know, all this willpower based stuff, just, just stop smoking. And that's what we typically learn in medical school. Prescribe some medications to help people with the physiologic withdrawal and then basically help them set a quit date for a couple of weeks out and wish them luck. Well, if we take a different approach uh, here, the suggestion is that if we actually bring awareness in as we're doing the be behavior, I'm using smoking as an example, but we'll bring this to eating in a moment. Actually things take care of themselves. It's, it's simply through awareness that we can actually tap into the brain. So how does this work? There's an example of somebody in one of our studies, I, I think this is one of our studies where somebody said, you know, she's paying attention as she was smoking, mindful smoking smells like stinky cheese and tastes like chemicals. Yuck. The idea here is reward-based learning or reinforcement learning is not based on the behavior itself. It's based on how rewarding the behavior is. If it were just based on the behavior, I could just tell my patients, patient walked into my office. I could say, just stop smoking, just stop overeating, just stop worrying but that's not how our minds work. It's not how our brains work. It's really based on how rewarding a behavior is. And if you take this back to Buddhism, the Buddha really emphasized cause and effect. So the cause is the behavior. The effect is how rewarding a behavior is. So if something's really rewarding, we're gonna do it again. If it's not rewarding, we be start to become disenchanted. The Buddha even described this, he said, it wasn't until I explored gratification to its end that knowledge and vision arose. So he's talking about really exploring how rewarding behavior is.